Hey everybody, I wanted to talk about recording acoustic guitars. I have several acoustic tracks I need to do today. It just made me think I should share some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way to play a good sounding, quiet acoustic track with no click bleed and minimal amount of finger squeaks, being in tune and all that good stuff. So I have a couple tips here and then I will film myself playing a track and talk a little bit more. First thing, it's a tuner. Tuners are important. Uh, I like headstock tuners on my acoustics. I have the Polytune here. It actually tunes your guitar. Most headstock tuners don't seem to really work that well, in my experience. I'm talking about the uh, Diodarios and the Snarks, the tuners that are 10 bucks, you know, at that price point. I, I don't rely on those in the studio. Uh, they do have their place, just not for me when I'm tracking. So this, this Polytune, uh, I've got the white polytune. I think there's different colors, and I don't know if they're different at all. I paid 40 bucks for this. It lasts a long time on the single battery. I keep batteries with me, but it also actually tunes my guitar. After I get done tuning with it, my guitar sounds in tune, which it doesn't with other tuners. Some guys, uh, some of my buddies who play acoustic, will use a Peterson strobe tuner, literally sitting on the music stand in front of them, and so they tune with that. That's great. I just, I don't carry one of those around with me and the polytune works well. Maybe they're getting a better a better tuning out of that than I get out of the polytune. I don't know. I don't like the standard little headstock tuners. I don't think they work very well. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Second thing I want to talk about before I get started on this track is headphones and noises that you yourself make. First, headphones. So I use these monstrous really well isolating cans. I call them studio cans, headphones. You might recognize these without all the wires on them. You can find these at Home Depot just as earmuffs. They're made by Peltor. That's what the, it's, it's in the plastic on the side. It says Peltor. That's the brand. It's for operating heavy machinery or going to a shooting range or something like that. Anything where you have extremely loud noises, you need to protect your hearing. Well, this guy, GK Music, has turned these into ultraphones. So what he did was cut the guts out of a mid-level Sony set of headphones and then cut these open and glue them in and turn these earmuffs into headphones. They're crucial for me. One, no click bleed when playing acoustic. I listen really quietly anyway, but even on, you know, standard Sennheiser headphones or Audio-Technica or anything that's got the real soft foam that's not very dense, it's not isolating what you're hearing from the microphone in front of your guitar very well at all. So you might be finishing up a track and hit a big... hit the big diamond at the end of the song and then you hear... When you were playing, it was covering up the click, but then when you just let it ring, you hear it. That's called click bleed, and that is unacceptable in this town. Number one, I listen really quietly, and number two, I use these massive shooting range earmuffs that have been turned into headphones. Everybody uses these. They're incredible. The other... You may have just heard my stomach growl. I would have stopped recording <laughs> at that point. <laughs> and start it back over because a microphone is going to hear, especially, especially a microphone that is pointed at my abdomen, pointed at the guitar right at my abdomen level. That's something else I want to talk about. But one more point about these headphones. They're invaluable when playing electric as well because when I'm playing electric on a session with a band, I'm usually sitting in the same room as the drummer. The drums can be painfully loud in a closed studio room. It's a totally different level of pain than standing next to a drum kit outside or in a big open concert hall or a club or whatever. It's totally different. Usually where I'm sitting across from the drums, I'm usually sitting far enough away for those sound waves to really accelerate and do the most damage. In those rooms, it's just it just hurts. Most drummers will stop playing when you're walking in. Say they're getting sounds before the session, which every drummer does. They usually show up 30 to 40 minutes ahead of everyone else. The engineer has to dial in all the all the sounds on the on the drum kit. There's more mics on the drum kit than anywhere else. Often the rest of us show up while they're getting sounds. They're hitting the snare, they're hitting toms, or the engineer will say, kick, snare, and hat. And so they'll play a groove and he'll, and, okay, now do toms. And they'll play on the toms or whole kit minus cymbals or just the cymbals or whatever. So they're playing and when you walk in without these on, I mean, it can, it can just take your head off. Depending on who is getting sounds, there's some guys I know that will never stop playing. They don't care if you walk in, they'll 
they're cracking the snare for all it's worth. So I'll put these on before I walk in the room and I'll shove the cord in my pocket while I get my guitars out and turn on my amps and my pedal board and my rig, you know. So these can prevent pain, but they also keep me from having to adjust my mix when I'm stacking a part with a full band. Usually the drummer isn't playing when I move to my second part, like they got their part done. And so if I were wearing a set of cans that didn't isolate well, how I'm hearing the drums is gonna drastically change when I go to stack another part and he's not playing anymore. But with these, again, it just isolates so well. It's not like I can't hear the drums, but they don't affect it. They don't change what I'm hearing enough for me to have to change my mix and what I have being sent here, because we all have these little mixers to turn up drums, bass, vocal, click, turn up ourselves, the acoustic guy, whatever. I don't have to change anything between passes. Whether the drummer's playing or not, it sounds the exact same. I don't need to turn the drum fader up or mess with anything like that. And even more crucially, <clears throat> I don't have to turn everything up in the cans to overcome the sound of the drums in the room because they're so loud in a closed studio space. So I'm really paranoid about my hearing. I came into this line of work sort of after a bunch of musicians, my guitar heroes included, were suffering from debilitating tinnitus. And that kind of terrifies me. So I take extra care to make sure that I'm isolating really well with those headphones and that I also listen quietly. I don't turn it up loud at all. I feel like the intensity should come from how I'm playing, not the volume of what I'm listening to. That's just me. There's some guitar players, some guys my age and even younger, who will sit down and just, they just crank it up and it's a party. I'm just thinking, how in the world do you go to sleep at night? I would just be lying there hearing boo in my ears the whole time when it's quiet, maddening. Anyway, last thing I wanna talk about is sounds that you make yourself. If you have allergies, I think it's about that time of year for most people who suffer from allergies. I have them mildly here in Nashville. Most of the time, I will clear my throat before I start playing an acoustic track, just to keep from a tickle sort of arising and me thinking, am I gonna get through it? Am I gonna get through it? Trying to hold it, you know, while I'm playing or whatever. I'll just get it out of the way ahead of time. And then I also do some things with how I slide on an acoustic and how I jump to chords without making a bunch of excess noise with my left hand. I don't want to try to eliminate all the sounds because I like the sound of a human with their hands on a guitar. Like you should be able to tell that it's a human being playing it. We're not trying to edit out all evidences of a human actually playing an instrument. But there are some little ways that, that I get around making big squeaks when I jump or slide between positions and what strings I'll slide on. And I'll talk about that as I, as I play this track. So here comes the track, enjoy.
<clears throat> oh man, I've been holding a cough for the second half of that song. <laughs> I'm going to redo the outro, at least the part where it slows down, the retard. Got to be careful how you say that word. Here we go. So that's an acoustic track. My client just wanted a single pass of acoustic that had a lot of forward momentum, hence the finger picking. The intro pattern's cool, which he actually had on his work tape. Um, it was just. So there's that cool move on the four chord. I'm in A, capoed at the second fret, I'm playing. Playing like I'm in G. I'm using this voicing for the for the five chord, which is an E. Instead of playing my open D shape here for the E chord, taking a C chord and sliding up, you get this really cool rub. It's a D add four. So you have the D triad. You also have the four, so it's not a sus. There it's a sus, there it's a triad. Here it's both, so I think the name of that is an add four, D add four, but since I'm capo two, it's E add four. So that's the chorus progression. Notice I'm leaving my index finger down and sliding between those two chords. I lift up my lower two fingers because I don't want the... I don't want to get that. the slide but since this is a plain string I don't have the squeak of the windings on the lower string so it's a subtle move but it's really effective because my mic is right here you kind of can't see it but it's literally right here and so kind of puts all my playing under a microscope there's little tricks I do to try to keep from squeaking really bad squeaks are okay sounds like a human being playing the guitar that's a good thing but sometimes a real strong I can avoid that, so I will, but I'm not trying to get rid of every evidence of human fingertips on strings, you know. I don't use any fast fret or coated strings. I hate the way coated strings sound. Sorry. But there are just some little tricks that I do like that to help minimize sound, squeak sound. Uh, is there any other interesting parts of this song? Oh, the, the kind of solo-ish section. I know you can't hear the lyrics, but the solo-ish section is actually a vocal melody, and it, the chords change there. that move again. So cool. That's all I got for today.